I'm here today at the Cowpens National Battlefield to explore primary and secondary resources. Uh, what's the difference in them and what's the, what are some examples of these things? Okay, primary resources are those resources that actually um, have a direct connection with the historical event uh, you're trying to research. Uh, these things could be like letters, um, journals or diaries that people have written, actual artifacts uh, from uh, that particular event. Secondary resources basically is what happens when you take all the primary resources. Uh, you've read those, but uh, the author probably has never, uh, was never there at the historical event, probably happened uh, many years before uh, they started writing. And takes these things to kind of get a better picture of the overall uh, event, uh, historical event that uh, they're trying to um, teach the reader uh, about. Example of primary resources uh, would be things like um, um, diaries, uh, letters, artifacts uh, from the historical event. But these are things that have some kind of actual uh, connection with the historical event itself. While secondary resources are those resources that um, uh, a historian may be uh, t taking primary resources, c uh, collecting them, um, getting information from them uh, to give a better overall uh, picture of the historical events they're trying to write about. Uh, they may also be using the artifacts just to kind of give examples of what um, people used uh, at the time. Or they may actually um, create or reproduce uh, artifacts um, and that would be a secondary resource. Usually examples of this is uh, books about uh, various uh, events like battles. Uh, also you would have uh, textbooks. Those are very good examples of secondary resources. All right, here's some examples of weaponry uh, from the era of the American Revolution. Uh, these probably are authentic pieces. That means they were real, they were used. Now, they may not have been used here at Calpins, uh, but uh, they were used and probably passed down from generation to generation, well cared for. That's the reason why they look so good today. This weaponry from uh, the American Revolution could probably be considered a primary source. Uh, these are authentic. They came from that time period, but they've just been well cared for as they were passed down from generation to generation of owners until they were donated to the National Park Service. Okay, uh, the uniforms you see here are actually reproductions. Um, again, most uh, real uniforms probably have uh, long deteriorated uh, or at uh, places where they could be better kept uh, then maybe say this uh, little visitor center. This weaponry, um, while I'm guessing to be uh, real, that could also be replicas. And as you can see, uh, replicas can be made to an exact standard um, that looks like an authentic uh, piece of history. Uh, these weapons can give us an idea of uh, uh, what it was like, um, how they uh, looked when uh, soldiers on both the British and the American side used them against each other during the American Revolution. Um, however, most people probably wouldn't swing these around. They use replicas especially. You also have replicas like this cannon. Uh, usually they're put together or um, created uh, for uh, to show how uh, things worked uh, back during uh, the times of the American Revolution. I'm sure this thing could actually uh, fire uh, if need be, although it's here in the visitor center. Uh, but um, many times you'll see weapons uh, from the past that have been uh, recreated that are used by reenactors or others. And even though this is a secondary uh, resource, it gives you a good idea of how people used weapons or used tools um, back during the uh, time, uh, in this case, the American Revolution. Okay, I'm back home now, and I just want to show you a few examples of, I have of both uh, primary and secondary sources. Okay, first off, 
Uh, this book is called Private Yankee Doodle uh, by J.P. Martin, but it was originally under the title of uh, being a narrative of some of the adventures, dangers, and sufferings of a revolutionary soldier. Uh, Joseph Martin was a revolutionary soldier for the American cause, and he wrote uh, about his uh, time in the Continental Army, and this is the book. So this would be a primary source, considering it was written by somebody who actually participated in the um, American Revolution. Here I got some uh, examples here of some secondary sources, books that is. Uh, South Carolina and the American Revolution, Kings Mountain and Cow Pins, uh, Devil of a Whipping, uh, The Battle of Cow Pins. Uh, these are all uh, books that are secondary sources. They have taken uh, other sources, other uh, um, secondary sources, but they also use uh, primary sources to kind of get a bigger picture of um, the Battle of uh, Calpins, uh, the war uh, in the South, okay, and that's uh, what they do, basically using those two things. And I also, too, have some uh, magazine articles. Um, this is Strategy and Tactics, the American Revolution in the South, and Military Heritage, um, Cavalry Fight at Calpins. Again, secondary sources. These were written well after the fact. Uh, but probably use some primary sources to, um, again, give us an overall picture of um, um, the American uh, or the American Revolution in the South, and then how the cavalry was used at the Battle of Calpins. Now, artifacts, uh, some other things. Now, this little whistle, uh, this was uh, a replica of uh, a signal whistle that. Uh, Light infantry, um, militia probably used to signal each other uh, on various things, and uh, it works. So um, this would be a secondary source. The reason being is it was not actually in use during the uh, revolution or that time period by the soldiers, but it was actually uh, crafted probably by machine um, to the same design that was used um, during the American Revolution. Uh, it even comes with uh, some music um, that uh, soldiers would use to alert each other for various uh, things, although I'm sure that changed from unit to unit. Now this right here, um, my grandfather dug this up in a field near uh, Glen Springs, South Carolina. Uh, it was an area with a lot of known uh, activity during the American Revolution. So this is believed to be a dragoon or cavalry saber. Now whether it's American or British, uh, we don't know. Uh, but uh, my grandfather was plowing in a field one day and uh, using a horse-drawn uh, plow, uh, he <laughs> hit the uh, hilt or the handle of the sword uh, breaking it, and uh, this has been kind of passed down in my family since then. So uh, this would be a primary source because this obviously was used during the time, uh, probably of the American Revolution. So how about thinking about some uh, maybe um, artifacts or books? Uh, journals, diaries, what have you, that you may have uh, that could be considered primary or secondary resources, particularly primary. Uh, talk to your family about that. You know, what are some uh, actual things that have been used in the past uh, that were there so it would make it a primary source? And uh, think about um, how that connects you uh, to history, because now, I, you know, I have obviously, obviously a connection to the American Revolutionary War personally. Um, so think about that, get with your family, uh, and um, make those connections. Thanks for watching.